Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, we'll be creating some easy Dollar Tree decor DIYs. Now to all of my amazing subscribers and visitors, I wanted to say hey hey, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you definitely should, so you could be the first to see my new creations. So let's get started. Now this project is a wood two-tier tray. Now we're going to need uh, two of these hexagon trays and I have them in two different sizes. I got these from Dollar Tree in the photo frame section. We're also going to need a six and a half inch piece of a one by two. You can get these pieces from Dollar Tree or for the from the home improvement store. So I'm going to start off with grabbing those two pieces and my wood piece. What we're going to do is prepare these. So we're going to go ahead and remove any labeling on the bottom. Now I was surprised the labeling came off pretty good and left the bottoms of these pretty clean. So I didn't have to do any touch ups. So we're going to find the center of each one of the trays and this is to support it. So I'm using my ruler and just making a half estimate on two different sides of the tray. And then I'm going to mark the center with a pencil. Now once you do that, you're just going to repeat this and do this for your other tray and now they are both marked in the very center. Now I'm going to take my drill because I want to drill a pilot hole for a screw. I'm going to be screwing these together so I want to drill a pilot hole and I'm using about a 7 16th drill bit I believe and I'm going to make a hole in the center of each one of these. If you don't have a drill you definitely can use a hammer and nail technique. Now I'm also going to drill a hole down into my support piece on the top and the bottom and this will allow the screw that I use to go all the way in and give it the proper support. So I'm going to drill all the way in a couple of inches on one side flip it over and drill in a couple of inches on the other side you guys or crafters if you guys don't have a drill on hand they're really cheap you definitely can get one and I have the ones that I use in the description box below so now that everything is prepped, we are going to go ahead and stain everything. So I'm grabbing my two trays, the support stake and my stain. I'm using a Minwax Early American stain. I wanted something a little lighter this time, so I'm going with Early American. Now I'm just taking a little cloth and I'm gonna stain all the sides of my wood support piece. You don't need to necessarily do the ends, but the surfaces. And then I like to go over everything with a paper towel to remove all of the excess stain and this will allow it to dry more evenly and um, faster. Now for the trays, I'm going to do the outside and inside of that wood part and also that top edge. We're not going to do the bottoms or the inside with the stain. So we're going around there, we're going to apply that stain and we're going to go around the outside edge and then that top edge, just making sure it combines in and then going around the inside edge. These have a wood layer over MDF so they do take the stain very well. Now you can see I stained a little bit on that decorative side. I'm just going over that with a paper towel. We're going to be covering that anyway, but we want to clean up any messes as we go. So now that we're going to do the second one, they're both stained and ready to go. We're going to let these sit to dry. So now that they're, all of our pieces are dry, we can go ahead and cover the inside of our tray. And I'm gonna use something as simple as the Dollar Tree vinyl. You guys, if you don't have a cutting machine, I know you probably walk by the vinyl and pay no attention to it, but I always love to use the Dollar Tree vinyl, especially for covering things and decorating things. So don't dismiss the vinyl at Dollar Tree. So I cut two pieces because I'm gonna layer the inside of my tray. So I'm gonna um, cut it down to a square size where it covers the whole tray. And then once I get that square size, in order to get that hexagon shape, all I'm gonna do is press it in and then just finger press the design all the way around the tray, pressing that vinyl in. Now I, the backing is still on the vinyl, you guys. So I'm just pressing it around to try to get that shape and look, the shape transferred to the vinyl. So when I cut this out of the vinyl, you wanna leave about a quarter of an inch outside of that press line. And this will just give you some wiggle room as you apply this to the inside of the tray. So here it is, here's the piece all cut out and I'm just doing a test fit real quick to make sure everything is good to go before I peel off that backing. Now when I do start to peel off the backing and apply it to my tray, I'm only gonna do half at a time. So I'm peeling off half and just kind of folding it over and then putting that first side of the sticky side down on the inside of the tray. And this is just to make sure you don't have to keep lifting it and placing it again. If you work with half the vinyl first and get that in place, you could peel off the other half 
calf and then just rub your fingers on the inside and just make sure everything is nice and smooth all the way to the edge and as you can see this applied really great and it's all the way to the edge now to remove that little quarter of inch we're just going to use our utility blade really simple you could Go around the inside edge with the blade and remove all of that excess vinyl so it looks nice and clean on the inside. Now these look awesome. So once that one is done, definitely we're going to do the second one the same way. And both of our trays are now complete. So now it's time to put everything together. So I'm gonna grab my screw box and I decided to go with a number eight two inch screw. If you want information on my screws, you definitely can check that as well in the description box. So I'm gonna start with the bottom tray. Now I'm going up through the bottom of the bottom tray with the screw and I'm screwing it in where a little bit sticks out, taking my supporting piece and then first screwing that supporting piece on the end of that screw and then using my drill to completely insert it. And as you can see, it's nice and flush on the bottom, really secure. Now for the top tray, we're gonna take the screw and go in through the top of it. So I'm just gonna hand screw it a little bit, use my drill to assist with getting it in just a little bit more until that end is sticking through the other side. And then we're gonna take our base and align that screw with the pilot hole that's inside the base, you guys. It's so easy. I'm just twirling my um, tray top all the way down and then using my drill to completely put it in. And you guys, look. This tray turned out amazing and it was so easy. Now, if you want to disguise that screw, you can just go over it with a few dots of some black acrylic paint and voila, it is done. So now the fun part is you can decorate it. And check it out, you guys. This turned out so amazing and I love the design of this. Now, I placed some of my favorite modern boho style decor on these and really love how everything looks with the wood trays. Now, you guys definitely have to let me know how would you decorate this piece in your space. It's so cute and elegant. Now, this project is a bowl planter on a stand. Now I'm gonna use a bowl from the Dollar Tree. I love this white one with the black stripes. It just looks so sophisticated. And I'm gonna use one of these black candle stands. This is the ceramic ones that Dollar Tree sells. So grabbing my bowl and my stand together, we're gonna to start on the project. Now ultimately the bowl will be mounted on top of the candle stand. Now I am gonna use my um, hot glue for this and this is because I might repurpose this, but if you want this to be permanent, definitely use E6000. You guys, that will be a permanent hold. Very difficult to detach if you use E6000. So now that the bowl is attached to the stand, it's really cute as it is, but I wanted to amp it up just a little bit. So what I decided to do is use some brown beads on it. Now I did repurpose these beads from a Christmas garland that was on clearance, but you guys, Dollar Tree sells bagged beads. Now, if you haven't been to the craft section, check it out. Now to string these beads together, I am just using some fishing line, fishing line that I had on hand, but you could definitely use the Dollar Tree jute twine. That works perfect as well. So I'm just gonna start stringing on all these beads to my fishing line, and here it is. And once I believe I have enough, I'm gonna go ahead and test fit them around the bowl. Now I'm doing it around the base of the bowl. It seems like the perfect fit for these beads. And once you wrap it around, you can check to see if you need more beads or less beads. And then when that's done, you just do a triple knot on the back and make sure it's really, really tight. And then just clip away all of the excess string. And you guys, this looks so amazing with the beads. I love it. Now, I loved it so much, I felt like I wanted to add more beads. So what I decided to do is add some around the base as well. So I made another strand with my fishing line and I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom of the base just to give it another accent, add it another triple knot and cut it, you guys. Look, isn't this gorgeous? I love this little piece and so really simple. So now it's time to decorate. And I grabbed some succulents and wow, I love how sweet this looks. Now I think adding greenery in different styles really makes this come together. 
And all of the beautiful beading really completes this look. Now, I really do hope that you give this easy DIY to try. And don't forget, you can switch out the filler however you like. And these neutral bunches from the Dollar Tree worked out great in this project. And don't forget candles. You can add a candle with succulents and greenery. The possibilities are really endless in this project. Now this project is a wood trimmed planter box. We're gonna need one of these large lidded boxes from the Dollar Tree. You can get these all year round in the gift box section. And I'm also gonna use some cord or jumbo craft sticks and I picked these up from the Home Depot. You can get them from Dollar Tree as well in a smaller size and you only need one pack for this project. So I'm gonna take my box, put the lid to the side and we're going to go ahead and start covering it with those wood sticks. I love these quart size craft sticks. They're very generous and they're pretty good quality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start laying them a like in planks around the box. So I'm gonna start by cutting off a flat edge of each one of the craft sticks, measuring it out to make sure it fits, marking it with my pencil, and then I'm just gonna cut off that end and do a test fit. Now, once that test fit is good, you can actually copy this to other sticks, but I just did mine individually. It's all up to you. Now you can add your hot glue or wood hot glue to there and just start gluing it around the box. We're gonna repeat this all the way around, and look, this is one section, so it's turning out out really really great so I'm just gonna keep on going until the box is fully covered and here it is you guys this looks like a solid wood box I love it and you also have more craft sticks and pieces left over for other projects which is a bonus so now it's time to stain and I am using Memwax's Early American for this. And I'm going to go ahead and just apply it to that wood portion of the box. And I tell you, these sticks take the wood so well. Now look at what it looks like amazing the color is awesome and then I'm following up with a paper towel to remove the excess so it dries nice and even so now that the box is partially dry I'm gonna go ahead and just do the inside and I wasn't too fond of the pink for this project but we're gonna change it to something more neutral like black so I am painting the inside of this container black on the bottom and the sides and look such a difference in quality. Let me tell you guys, just adding a little paint and stain can make things transform amazingly. So now that that is done, what we're gonna do is cover the bottoms. Of course, I always cover the bottoms of my projects. They just look so more, so much more complete. So I just use just some regular hot glue around the bottom and go around the edge. And then I end up putting an X on the bottom and then adding my piece on the bottom. This is thick craft paper. I get this in a construction size roll from the home improvement store. It's much thicker than what you get at the craft store. So this is why I love using this particular style. But any craft paper or crafting foam will work. So now we're just cutting off the excess with a utility blade and you can see how neat and clean that looks on the bottom of the project. And then once this sits and completely dries, you can decorate it. And oh my goodness, how gorgeous does this planter box look? It turned out so great. Now I have seen boxes like these that are so expensive and I'm just so glad to share with you guys how to recreate one yourself. And like all of my projects, you can use any decor that you love to fill this box. We just want you to have fun with it and change it out for every season. Now this project is a bamboo ring tray. We're gonna need that lid from a Dollar Tree box from the previous project. And then I'm gonna need a seven pack of these bamboo rings from the Dollar Tree. So we're gonna take our lid and we're gonna go ahead and get it prepared for to make our project today. Now I'm gonna be using, again, the Cricut vinyl in black. I'm gonna use this to trim out the outside of my tray. Now you may ask, well, why not just paint it? Well, if you paint the outside and then try to glue something on it, it'll come right off. So I think what I'm gluing to it would stick to the vinyl better. So what I'm doing is cutting two long strips that are larger than the width of the edge of that lid and then I'm going to apply them. 
So I'm just gonna peel off the sticky strips and just apply them all the way around. Now I did make them bigger and wider than the actual lid, but we're gonna go back in and do some trimming later so that's not an issue at all. So here are both of them on there. You can see it has some overage. Now for the um, open end of the box, I'm going in with my utility blade and I'm just trimming off that excess even with the lidded edge. Now here it is all cleaned up. Now on the back, I'm not gonna trim it off. I'm just gonna cut little slits at every corner that it's over and then folding them in on the bottom. There's no need to do all that extra trimming if you don't have to because we are going to be covering this up. So once that's folded over and st stuck in place, then we can proceed to the next step, which is covering up the bottom. Now, the tops of these boxes is gorgeous. I love this floral design, but I'm gonna cover it up. It's gonna be the bottom of my project. So I added my glue, taking my thick craft paper, and then I'm going to be trimming it down with my utility blade. Now, these utility blades can be purchased at Dollar Tree or home improvement stores. They're really inexpensive, and they have replaceable blades, so you don't keep having to buy the utility blade uh, mechanism itself now once that's done we are going to go ahead and cover up that pink with the black so I'm just going to add the black on the inside and then I'm going to paint the entire inside of the lid including those edges with the black acrylic paint here it is and now we're going to let it sit to dry so now that it's dry, we can start working on our bamboo accents. So this seven pack of bamboo rings is perfect for this project. You can get two packs if you want a full circle, but I wanted half circles for mine. Now what I did, I wanna split them in half and I found that the very best way was to use a utility blade. I tried using wire clippers, it was a disaster, don't do it. <laughs> but utility blade is best. I marked the halfway point and all you wanna do is sit your blade on one side of the ring and rock it back and forth. It will cut through these bamboo bamboo rings like butter. I was amazed and the cut is so clean. So I can appreciate that. That is the way that worked for me. So that's how I'm going to cut all mine in the future. So all together, we're going to cut six rings out of that package to do the half ring design. Now to make it match any kind of decor, I love the wood stain look. So I'm going to be using my Mimwax Early American Stain to stain these. And these stain very well. Um, and I was really surprised at that. So you want to stain all all the surfaces of them let them dry and here they are ready to go so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be applying these on the outside edge now I originally wanted to apply them bottom on the bottom even but I decided to take them up towards the top edge I really like that look so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply some of my high strength glue there and I am going to start gluing them around two half circles on each side of that hexagon shape and I'm liking that look so I'm going to continue with it and you guys here it is I think it's so super cute oh my goodness so I'm letting this sit for a few minutes and then I am ready to decorate it and there you have it it's a super cute tray that you could use in your home decor now you can have this on a vanity, a desk, or make it even a cute centerpiece for a coffee table. And there's so many ways that you can use this just to get creative. You can add candles and greenery, whatever makes your heart happy. Now I hope you enjoy creating these as much as I did. Now all of these budget friendly DIYs today are so sweet, but let me know in the comments which one was your favorite today. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy crafting as much as I do and share this video with your friends that love to craft too. Now check me out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for more projects and even giveaways. And don't forget to subscribe to see more. It's absolutely free. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.